Hello, Blake Rudis here with F64 Academy and F64 Elite, and today I'm gonna to show you a really quick three-step process to nail your white balance every single time. So here is our before, and here's our after. Here's our before, here's our after. Let's go to another image. Here's our before, and here's our after. Let's take a look. So I recently shared this really cool tip with the users of On One Photo Raw to help them quickly white balance their images. And as it always goes, when I show a tutorial like that in some other product, someone says, well, how would I do this in Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom? Well, I'm gonna show you that today. This is probably the quickest and most natural way to find the uh, perfect white balance for your image even if your white balance wasn't shot correctly. So here we have a forest image, and a lot of times with forest images when we're in shady areas, it can be difficult to get the right white balance. I typically shoot an auto white balance anyway because I know the tips and tricks in order to get my white balance correct in post. So this is a three-step process. It's a really simple three-step process based on a very complex nature that I'll tell you after we do this here, okay? So those three steps, go to your vibrance, slam that vibrance up, and when you slam that vibrance up, look what happens in your image. It shows you and it tells you what the most dominant colors in your photograph are. Right now, the most dominant color in this image is this blue. So if I wanna offset that, what do I do? I don't add more blue to my temperature. I come down here and I increase the yellows in it to offset those blues a little bit. And then I can look at the greens and look at the tint and temperature here and say, okay, are those greens a little too much? Well, I can add more magenta to them to tone them down, or I can make those greens a little bit more vibrant if I want them to show off a little bit more, okay? So then once you have this set up, you come back down to your vibrance and set it to zero. All right, so here is the as shot. It's really blue. Here's the custom. We get a little bit more yellowing in there. Now by its nature, because of the way it's working, it's going to desaturate our images a little bit. So if you bring the vibrance back up, it'll, it'll reincorporate some of that saturation back into your image. And I'll tell you why this gets so desaturated in a minute here. I'm gonna go over to another difficult image, a nighttime image uh, where the white balance is so difficult to deal with because you have so many different color temperatures and so many different lights that are creating the white balance in your photograph. Well, as shot, it's very yellow. Look at the amount of yellow that's in this image. So what do we do? First step, slam the vibrance up, step one, okay? Now what we need to do is we need to offset that yellowing. How do we do that? Well, this time, instead of adding yellow to that, we're gonna add some blue to it. So we add some blue to it and look what happens. We don't wanna add so much blue that blue becomes a dominant color. We just wanna offset that yellowing that's happening from the lights that are down below. And then when we look at this, we can see that there's quite a bit of magenta that's coming through. So we might need to add a little bit, a tinge of green to this to see what happens there, just a little bit. And now we'll take that vibrance and set it to zero. So now if we go back to as shot, very yellow looking photograph. And now we go back to a custom white balance that we just set by slamming that vibrance all the way up. Step one, modifying the temperature and the tint very quickly to see what the dominant color is and to offset it. Where this comes from is the idea of complementary colors and how they interact with one another. The opposite of blue on the color wheel, the digital color wheel, is yellow. So if there's too much blue in the image, we just need to add a little bit more yellow. If there's too much magenta in the image, we just need to add a little bit more green and vice versa. Now this is, as I said, this is a good starting point for your white balance. It takes away that idea of, well, just press and hold shift and click on a neutral color. Well, how do you know what a neutral color is when you're white balance is off to begin with. Slam that vibrance up, that will show you what your dominant color is, and then you come in there with that white balance and that temperature and you tweak it so that you offset that just a little bit. And while this might seem like a simple concept, it's actually a pretty advanced color theory concept where you're looking at one color in your image and you're saying, okay, why is this one color so dominant? And what can I do to that one color to make it less dominant? Well, you just add its counterpart. You add its complement, and they balance each other out because of the harmony of those two working together. 
So again, my name is Blake Rudis with F64 Academy and F64 Elite. If you like this, please comment on it, share it, tell a friend and subscribe. I can't tell you how important it is to subscribe because when you subscribe, you will get notifications in your email when new video tutorials like this come out. And if you have any other ways that you correct white balance that might be a little unorthodox, go ahead and leave it in the comments below because I'd be curious to hear about it. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this. I sincerely appreciate it. Mm -hmm.